Now, when we studied the, the things from the book, we didn't look at chapter 1. So we're going to skip chapter 1. I'm going to just call your attention to things that are important to study. And so in a way, this is part of your review sheet. If you're creating a review sheet, um, you want to do that. Now, uh, I, I was talking to Susie earlier. And she said she's rented the book, and she's technically not supposed to write in the book. She's been very good about that. So it's a good idea to uh, maybe use some uh, you know, post-it notes like I did here, little tabs or something, to point these things out to yourself if you can't actually write in the book. All right. Okay, so chapter 2. We're skipping chapter 1, going right into chapter 2. Yes. Page 17 is chapter 2. Page 18 is where it begins. This, this page here, we talked at length about this page and the next page. And we were talking about how editors decide what to put in the front page. Do you remember what that space is on the top part of the front page? What that's called? Above the fold. That's a really good term. Above the fold, right? Because in the machines, the self-serve machines, or even on a news rack, um, the article you see is the one that's above the fold. And that's the one that hopefully will help sell in those single sale copies to people who are just buying it off the street, right? above the fold. And then we talked about something that editors have, I just mentioned, that they decide where the news goes, or even if it is news, and it's something you want to develop. Do you remember what this is called, Melissa? News judgment. News judgment. Okay, and I said to everyone missed that on the last semester's test. So I'm really plugging away. It can have an E there or not. That time I won't include the E. The e or the knee. News judgment. So you want to have news judgment so you know, is this news? Where, how important of news is it? Uh, and so we talked about that at length. So you want to study that page, maybe to remind yourself. Next page, is it news that varies from newsroom to newsroom? We talked about, would this be news for a campus newspaper? Would this be news for this today's newscast? Would this be a news at a, a weekly small community newspaper? Really good exercise there you want to review. And I believe in that, that back of the chapter, there was a similar type of thing, right? And we did that. So hopefully you review that. You might see a, an exercise like that on the test. I really like this. Okay, and then on the col side column there, what makes a story interesting to readers? That has seven of the news values, and we added two. This is page 19. Unfortunately, you remember me kind of be bemoaning the fact that um, they really should make that a whole chapter. I mean, there's not much here on that. So we talked about that at length, and we had some exercises on news values. Very important that you understand what news values are for this test. Okay, very important you understand those. Okay, then the next two pages are about readers. All right, and we talked about readers have short attention spans. Uh, we have a hate-love relationship with readers because we have to have readers in order to sell newspapers in order to keep our jobs. All right, so uh, we talked at length about that. So make sure to review those pages. So that little cartoon on 22 and 23, that's cute, but we didn't really go into that. You can read that on your own. And then we skip that. And then we went back to page 28. Page 28. Okay. All right, so page 28 and 29, we did these little fill-in-the-blank um, exercises. Remember this? I have put online, definitely put the on, on for the, the online one. I need to make sure it's on for the, for the you guys. But I put the handout online. You had a handout with this where I asked you to fill in the blank. And I even gave you some other articles. If you have that, see if you thought I can find that. I'd be very impressed if you have that. Oh, there it is. I think that was it from the back. I guess I can throw this up there. All right, so it should look like that. It, it should be a little stapled thing, right? And you filled in the stuff, right? All right. It should look like that. All right. All right. So, um, like I said, if you want a blank handout to practice with us some more, I, this will be on Moodle for you. Okay, if you don't see it on Moodle, just remind me. Maybe shoot me an email. And uh, I'll write it on my hand. Article ID Moodle. Okay, so hopefully before I wash my hand, I will remember that. All right, and there it is.
Okay, so without looking, <laughs> you get a hat made up with that statement without looking. Without looking, don't do it. What can you identify here? All right. The top thing, pretty self explanatory, right? We know that that's the headline. The person's name, the person's name is the byline. Very good, guys. Good, good, good. Okay, and sometimes that has a little picture of the person. This here is kind of misleading the statement because instead of it being the place line, it's the date line. Nice. Oh, this first sentence, this first paragraph we know is the lead. Right, pretty straightforward. Okay, so that's pages 28 and 29. Now, also, the top of page 28, we had tabloid <coughs> and broadsheet. Really good terms there, right the, on the right, on the top there. They're two different shapes of the newspaper. Okay, moving along. Okay, and then on page 30, it kind of talks about being a converged journalist, kind of the title of the course, right? Converged news writing reporting. So at the bottom, it kind of gives the example of the uh, video, the multimedia journalist, the backpack journalist, sometimes they're called, a uh, one-man band. And you know what that is now? It's the journalist, right? Because you, you more and more, everyone is expected to be able to do these things. So uh, make sure you understand that, the converged journalist. It's a good thing to read at the bottom of that page. Okay, and then moving along, page 34. Page 34, we did one and two. Exercises one and two. Um, by now, you might want to do exercise three as well. We did not do that, but that would be a good way to practice. Because remember, the answers are in the back of the book to these exercises, right? So you in the online class, you should definitely be doing these exercises because you get immediate feedback, right? In this class, they're getting a lot of immediate feedback, um, but you are not. So you need to be doing these online exercises, and it's kind of on your honor if you're not doing them. Uh, that will really show for some people. Hopefully for nobody, but when you take the test, you need to have that practice. Okay, moving right along to the next chapter, chapter 3. We spent a good bit of time on pages 36 and 37. Okay, this is about, um, oh, I love that last sentence in that f top section. The facts tell the story, let readers form their own opinions. We s <laughs> it's sad, but especially TV news, they love to tell readers what to think, or viewers what to think. Let the, let the facts tell the story. Possibly the worst story ever written. We talked about that. And then the next page, where do, do opinions belong in journalism? We spent a lot of time talking about opinion. Bottom of page 37, the 10 most common factual newspaper errors. Okay, you in the uh, online class, you had a quiz and you might have gotten a question from that list. Really good list here. Misquotation number one. Um, numbers wrong, misspelling. Maybe good to take a look at that list on the bottom, for you guys too, bottom of page 37 on the right, the 10 most common factual newspaper errors. And then page 38 and 39, spend a good bit of time on this, really good explanation of the who, what, when, where, and why, and even the how, tacked on at the end. And I talked about a few times the most important of these, and we know now, because we've mentioned it several times, the most important of these is the, Alex, the what, very good. Without a what, there's usually no story. There are exceptions, but we went through each of these and most of these had a what, even though they were illustrating the different ones. Okay, the what is the most important. And then sort of the least important, or at least ones you don't usually have in the first day story or even the lead, are the which ones. Uh, Michael? Okay, yes, we don't often have uh, the, the details like where and when. That's definitely not first in the lead. And then the why and the how we don't often have in the lead or even the first article because we don't know the answers yet necessarily, right? That's, that they're still being investigated, especially the accident or crime or something like that. Page 40 and 41. Okay, we talked about the inverted pyramid, where that came from, at least the legend about it. Um, this was not that great of a page in explaining that this doesn't just have to do with details, this has to do with the importance of the details, right? Yes, Rhett? Question for you. Yes. Okay, that's a good question. He just asked, why is it the nut graph here? And the reason is, is be, and, I, and I wish this is not as clear as it could be in the book, the nut graph isn't an article that's written uh, in the typical inverted pyramid with a, a, the lead that gives the key facts. 
a nut graph is written in a feature story commonly or a more of a bright, you know, something with a punchy lead, an unconventional lead, where it doesn't, it just kind of, it, it kind of uh, whets your appetite. Like, what the, is this about? For Donald instance, Trump pardon? Donald Trump joins the Donald army. Donald Trump joins the army, okay. Yeah, so he, he, Donald Trump is joining the army because Donald Trump joins the army is kind of like a headline um, language. But, uh, yeah, they give some examples of that. And so uh, this was the page, page 40, that talked about the inverted pyramid. What was the other page that had the better explanation? Do you remember that? Yeah. Page 50? Okay, good. Thanks. Yes. Page 50. Okay, that's, that explains most important facts, other key facts, so on. And then if you combine that with the little uh, illustration on page 40, you see um, it explains those that better if you have them together. So I wish they had, he would have um, done that. Okay, so it can be cut from the bottom. We talked about the two audiences the inverted pyramid is for, right, for readers and for editors, and it's not a very writer-centric form. Writers, uh, reporters don't like it oftentimes. Okay, so 41, really good examples into the inverted pyramid in these little examples. And then on the one on the bottom is kind of what not to do. Okay, what not to do. Now, one of the things I want to mention, go back to page 50 just briefly. i to hold your hand there. Uh, these three styles, they did a really good thing here. They said what it's best for and then what maybe what it doesn't work for, at least the first one. Okay. You might see that in the test. So why do we, what kind of stories do we write the inverted pyramid for? Try not to look and think of what about that. What kind of stories do we use for the inverted pyramid? What do you think? What do you think, Chris? Okay, so hard news type stuff maybe, especially if the story is how long? It's a brief, right? Because once we get into a longer story, we might back up and do the chronology, which means it's what kind of format? martini glass, right? Okay, not recommended for everything else. So it says best for news briefs, stories about breaking news events, right? Not recommended for anything else <laughs> because we have the better, in some ways, the better form, the martini glass, best for crimes, disasters, and other dramatic news stories when you want to include a chronology that tracks how events unfold. And people want chronology, right? If they have, if they're going to invest in the article, they want, they want it to be clear, they want to be con it to be concise, they want to know what happened, and then they want to move on, right? They don't want you to get, you know, bogged down in flowery language. You're not trying to entertain them. They want the information, and they want it now. Okay, so the martini glass contains that chronology. The kebab is usually for more or more leisurely readers. So Wall Street Journal is famous for this. And here you begin with some personal story, some impact story on a personal scale, and then you end with it. You come back to it, all right? Now, I would not ask you to write a kebab story for the test, but I might ask you about that format. So make sure you know the format there. Right back to page 41. I love that thing on the bottom of page 40. In fact, we read it aloud in class, which shows you how important it was to me. The difference between the same set of facts in chronology, chronological form, and inverted pyramid style. Really good illustration of that. So make sure you've read that, you've studied that. Okay, moving on to page 42. I actually put the little thing in the, the right of the page, the, of page 42, how to write an effective newsletter. I actually put it up on the board. So that shows you how important that is to me. Um, remember, when we do these little writing exercises, I say, okay, what's the most important information here? Before you begin writing, please try to look at the facts and prioritize them. Decide what's the most important thing. Because students, they'll start just write, trying to write everything in there. And you, you, you can save yourself time by doing some thinking. So that might be a good little um, list to memorize, one, two, three, four. Okay, and then it talks about what happens if you bury the lead. We don't want to bury the lead, and we've talked about that numerous times. Okay, and then we have a good example of writing a lead depending on what to lead with. Right? That's a really good thing on page 43. Okay, and then uh, beyond the basic news lead, page 44 and 45, uh, page 45 on the quiz in the in-class class, we had, a, we had a question on this checklist, okay? So you might want to memorize these. Be concise, be accurate, remember what day it is, avoid naming names in the lead, 